never, not to this extent, ever happened before. I'm not allowed to defend myself, and yet other people are allowed to say whatever they want about me. Very, very unfair. Uh, having to do with the schools and the closings, that's Biden's fault. And by the way, this trial is all Biden. You know, this is all Biden, just in case anybody has any question. And they're keeping me in a courtroom that's freezing, by the way, uh, in a uh, courtroom all day long. Well, he's out campaigning. That's probably an advantage because he can't campaign. Nobody, nobody knows what he's doing. He can't put two sentences together. But he's out campaigning. He's out campaigning, and I'm here in a courtroom, sitting here, uh, giving, uh, sitting up as straight as I can all day long. Because you know what? It's a very unfair situation. So we're locked up in a courtroom, but this guy's out there. Campaigning, if you call it a What's happening, gang? It's your boy Retro back again with another reaction video. Yeah, yeah. Today we got another huge update coming from that corrupt state of New York, that Juan Merchant, that corrupt judge, that DA Alvin Bragg, guys. The strength of their case severely weakening after this newest update, guys. I'm coming from you know, Fox News. We got legal expert Jonathan Turley weighing in on what's going on with Alvin Bragg. I'm excited to get in this update to see exactly what's going on, how their case is backfiring on them now. So we're going to get straight to the clip and I'll give my thoughts on the back end of the video guys so definitely stick around to the end so guys get my thoughts on the back end and also youtube pushes this video out definitely stick around until the end you guys but let's get straight to the clip before we even do that though make sure you guys hit that like button for me and also hit that subscribe button as we're on the road to the truth guys hop aboard for the journey let's get into it y'all as court resumes tomorrow let's remember how the never trump legal types initially reacted to bragg's hush money indictment the entire point of an indictment is to tell the defendant, here's what you're charged with. He said, federal campaign election law, but this is New York State. So he said, state election law, but this is a campaign for president, which is a federal office. I have real questions about this. It's disappointment. It's hard to imagine convincing a jury that, that they should get there. One source said to me, uh, this is Donald Trump. You don't bring a knife to a gunfight. I had hoped that there would be more. But their April 2023 disappointment, even disbelief over the weakness of this case, has now become excitement, even anticipation. Their old concerns magically melting away. Joining me now, Jonathan Turley, George Washington University law professor, Fox News contributor. Professor, I love going back and watching these old clips because <laughs> now they're kind of in with the <laughs> in with the brag attempt to bootstrap you know, some conspiracy references into his into their opening statements and and now campaign finance violations. What the heck is going on here with this uh, evolving spin? I don't know, because this case is quickly becoming incomprehensible. I mean, they the newest theory <laughs> that they gave just as the trial was starting is that we have another dead misdemeanor. And the misdemeanor is that Trump conspired by promoting his own election unlawfully. But they don't explain really where the unlawful part is. They also don't explain how denoting this as a legal expense later affected the 2016 election. It just doesn't seem to matter to anyone in that courtroom that this is utter nonsense and that this is not a campaign violation in terms of contributions. Uh, the federal government did not believe there was grounds to charge anything in this case. Many experts reject that, that whole concept. And so what we're watching here is something that I've never seen the likes of. I mean, the judge is allowing this farce to unfold in his courtroom, and everyone just seems to be treating this like they're actually trying a known crime. When you have people still debating, not just on this network, what the crime was that Trump was trying to conceal, it, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's something that's out of a Fellini movie. It's, it's just crazy. Pro Professor, what would you say? Let, let's say you were you were uh, doing a seminar, like a criminal, you know, criminal defense seminar for third year law students, and they were actually trying to convince you that this was a Fed, this was a state crime rising to the level of a felony with these facts. I, I don't, wouldn't want to see what you graded this uh, theory on if they had to write a paper trying to argue this. Well, I remember I had a professor in law school who would always say, 
That's an interesting argument, but it doesn't pass the red face test. You have to be able to yeah. make that argument in court and not get a red face. And this is one of those things I tell the students. You're trying too hard. That is, the gravitational pull of who the defendant is is warping your judgment. Mm. And at some point, you have to decide what is more important. Go ahead. It's, yeah. At some point, it becomes an indictment, both of the press, of these legal minds who actually have a lot of experience in court. So they're indicting themselves by, you know, letting their, they despise Trump. So they want this to kind of fit into the, the box that Alvin Bragg has constructed and it doesn't work. But Jonathan, um, I want to move on to what's happening tomorrow at the Supreme Court. I wish I was there. I was desperate to be there to see the oral arguments uh -huh. in the Trump uh, case involving presidential immunity. Um, your quick take. Well, this is a real cliff case because there's cliffs on both sides and these justices don't want to go over them. Everyone's talking about how extreme and sweeping Trump's arguments are. Well, the lower court decision was pretty sweeping as well. Both are cliffs. You know, either you leave a president who has no protection uh, for statements made in the presidency or you create a president who has no accountability for even the most egregious crimes. There's a good chance the court's going to try to find a third option, a more nuanced approach. If that happens, it will have an immediate practical benefit because if it gets returned to the district court, I don't see how she could possibly hold a trial before the election. Wow. Jonathan, can't wait to see what happens. Thank you so much as always. Yo, there we have it, guys. Sounds like Alvin Bragg's case is turning into a total dumpster fire, guys. This whole thing was built up, you know, on a house of cards to begin with. You know, the big bad wolf is coming, blowing it all down. Alvin Bragg is coming after Donald Trump, you know, reviving this dead Frankenstein case, you know, upgrading these misdemeanors up to felony level charges, you know, in order to revive his case. It's not working whatsoever, guys. We can all see that this is political and that judge should be ashamed of himself for going along with this, you know, Alvin Bragg, whole charade case that he's brought about against Donald Trump. This whole thing should be tossed out. I mean, come on now, guys. This is a hush money case. You know, Donald Trump was apparently trying to conceal and cover up a crime that he done, but we can't figure out, you know, they won't point out the initial crime that, you know, Donald Trump is trying to cover up. You just cannot make these things up, folks. We've got Jonathan Turley, you know, legal professor, legal scholar, even saying that, you know, he's never seen anything of this magnitude, of this scope, you know, Alvin Bragg, you know, coming after Donald Trump with such a political case. And then we got, you know, that court system allowing it, guys. Come on now. This just does not make sense. It's blatant election interference at, you know, the most basic level. Um, and this thing needs to be tossed out. I like that test that Jonathan Turley, you know, mentioned that his professor gave to him to use when, you know, trying to prove an argument in court, you know, saying that, yeah, you can bring this argument, uh, you know, in, for of, in front of a judge, in front of a court. But I mean, like, is your face going to get red when you're trying to argue your points? And I mean, come on now, you're trying to argue that this guy tried to cover up a crime. And you're not even going to point out the crime that he's trying to, you know, cover up initially. Yeah, your face is going to get a little red. You should be embarrassed because you're building a case just because of who he is. We can clearly see that this is all just because, you know, he's Donald Trump. He is, you know, came out and announced he's running for 2024 presidency. And this is all a big stab at trying to interfere with that 2024 election, guys. Not working whatsoever. This is another one of those, you know, charade cases, political witch hunts that is bringing about even more support for Donald Trump. You know, then he gets to go out there in front of the courts after every time he meets, um, you know, gets put on trial for this, you know, charade case and get to, you know, tell the truth to the public. Let the American folks know, you know, get more folks on his side, aware of the truth, what's going on and how, you know, the Biden administration administration in the left is blatantly, you know, weaponizing the state, weaponizing the Department of Justice system to come after, you know, a political opponent, come after, you know, a presidential candidate, forget a, polit a political opponent, forget that, you know, this is a presidential candidate at the end of the day. Um, and they're coming after this guy. So he doesn't sit in that seat cannot have that. And that is exactly why he is getting, you know, the enormous amount of support that we've been seeing him get over these last couple of months, you know, ever since they start coming about him, you know, with these five charade cases guys political witch hunts then we've got the supreme court you know on the balance this has been on the back burner for a little bit you know um going to review whether or not or hear whether or not you know donald trump 
We'll have presidential immunity. This one within that Jack Smith, you know, uh, Mar-a-Lago is down there. We've seen with uh, Judge Eileen Cannon where Jack Smith is trying to get this thing rushed and sped up. Has not worked. He's been showing his political interest within the case just by the way he has been trying to, you know, get that thing sped up. Judge Eileen Cannon has not, you know, she stood strong. She has not, you know, budged for this pushy prosecutor. Jack Smith has been upset. You know, now we got Donald Trump, you know, arguing to the Supreme Court that he should have, you know, presidential immunity blanketing that whole time. Um, wherever, you know, the classified documents were said to have been stored and saying that, you know, he could declassify and classify documents wherever he felt the need because, you know, he is acting in presidential capacity. Um, if they, you know, rule in favor of this, you know, Donald Trump will essentially be dismissed and rid of these charges. Um, if they, you know, slam down on it, of course, Donald Trump will have to, you know, continue along with this case. The trial will continue. But then we got that third option where, you know, they don't want to uh, completely, you know, write it off to say that there is no presidential immunity going forward so that, you know, future presidents can be challenged just like, you know, what we're seeing with Donald Trump. Um, and then on the other hand, they don't want to, you know, give that big blanket to say that, you know, future presidents could, you know, do whatever, say whatever, you know, even the most heinous acts and get away with it. So they're kind of trying to, you know, work out and get that happy medium if working out that happy medium may take some time and they will have to rehear the arguments guys and potentially be bringing this up at another time a later date which means this thing will get pushed back even further playing back into that timing thing where we say you know this is all a big timing game jack smith is catching the biggest backfire of his case potentially with this supreme court hearing this out um i'll definitely be following that guys definitely hop in the comment section though let me know your thoughts on this we got alvin bragg you know his case flipping and backfiring on him you know it's blatantly showing that this is a political witch hunt um can't wait to see you know this thing be a mockery in court donald trump even further proving why you know american citizens need to support him guys definitely hop in the comment section and let me know your thoughts on this and also make sure you guys hit that share button share this out to as many facebook friends as possible guys share the truth also make sure you guys hit that like button it doesn't cost a thing hit that like button for your boy and also hit that subscribe button guys we're on the road to the truth hop aboard for the journey i'll catch you guys on the next one week Go.